Morning, Ali. Morning, Troy. I tuned Morning, in 10 sir. minutes ago and I realised that Troy has immediately picked up uh, how to work at, uh, at TalkSport because he's discussing biscuits. <laughs> oh, wow. I was going to be nice to you as well, but look at that impressive books, bookshelf you got behind you, which we know you've read none of them. Well done, sir. I've, I've read none of them. and they're Aesthetically all written, well. Ali, they're all written by Ali McCoy. So <laughs> well, I can guarantee the library. There'll be plenty of pictures in them, Henry, I would imagine, <laughs> if that was the case. Listen, mate, I mean, Troy and I were speaking earlier on there, and, and there might be an alternative reason why Thomas Tuchel isn't in the dugout for these games. But surely, Henry, it makes sense if you appoint a new manager, get him in as quickly as possible. Get him in as quickly as possible because they need to know his philosophy. They need team meetings. He needs to sit them down and just say, listen, we are going all out to win uh, the the World Cup in 2026. That's what his contract's about. The the clock is absolutely ticking. He needs to know not simply what they're like on the grass, how they play, but also what they're like around the hotel, what they're like as as characters. So all things like that, I I find it very bizarre. And and I agree with the the, the debate that... uh, TalkSport was having last night about the fact that if Tuchel was there, I think this is a point that Danny was making, more of the players would have reported. Now, it's no... Look, they're... At this stage of the season, any stage of the season, there are going to be injuries and issues and element of fatigue. But seven of the eight who have withdrawn are from top four clubs who obviously in a in a in a dogfight, you know, to try and well, three of them to try and catch up with Liverpool. So look that you know, there are issues there. It's a crazy long season and uh, Tuchel really should be here now learning. Very does strange. It, does it tell you, Henry, just a quick one, does it tell you with the call offs and listen, we, we, we all know the drill. There'll be niggles, and they'll probably be, if it was a World Cup semi final, Troy and I were talking about it. Five or six, and we'd probably have made themselves available. We'll get it, we know it. Is this a kind of opportunity for them to rest up? Is it an indication of what they think of this particular tournament? Is it any way a wee slap in the face to, to, to Lee Carsley in any way? I think it's a bit disrespectful to, to, to Lee Carsley. Mm. I mean, look, I'm sure there are absolutely genuine injuries. We saw Declan Rice and Bakaya Saka yeah. limping off at Stamford Bridge at the weekend. So you're not casting any sort of doubts on on their professionalism or their or, or their patriotism. Because one of the many things that uh, improved under Gareth Southgate is that players love reporting for uh, for England again. But no, it's not ideal. But then if the clubs are wanting them rested at this stage of the season. What's actually going to happen at the end of the season? Manchester City and Chelsea, two of our bigger clubs, biggest clubs, mm-hmm. are heading off to uh, to, to, to America for the, the, the Club World Cup for five weeks. How does that help Thomas Tuchel? How does that yeah. help England? How does that help those players actually have a break when the most important tournament they should be focusing on is 12 months hence <laughs> in, in the United States? Henry, just on, on, on Lee Carsley, what will what would this do for to him this period how will he be how will he be seen from from the media after after this yeah it's a good question well, I walked out I was at St George's Park yesterday and I walked out and uh, I bumped into Lee and we just sort of walked for about sort of 50 yards uh, together as so I was he was heading back to the hotel I was going back to my car and I just sort of you know obviously wished him luck and I actually think he's I thought the FA left him in a difficult position, particularly with that quite horrible press conference mm-hmm. post-match after the Greece yeah. game. And look, I was part of it. I was asking him questions. Obviously, all the, the you know the, the main newspapers were as well, sort of grilling him. And he must have known that Thomas Tuchel had signed. I thought the FA put him in a difficult position there because he's a he's a, you know him. He's a yeah. really decent guy. He he's he's patriotic. He's basically stepped in to to helping and stepped up from the under twenty ones. So he's doing a brilliant job. Last uh, England coach to, to to win a tournament, the under twenty ones, uh, the summer before last, done brilliantly. He's developed so many of these players. Like Morgan Rogers spoke yesterday. Morgan Rogers has developed under Lee Carsley. So so many of the them that these young players have which Thomas Tuchel is going to benefit from so uh, to, to, it's a slightly split because I think so some of the media just obviously gave him you know we all gave him a bit of a kicking over trying to get three number 10s in a in an England team against Greece and losing and losing our way in the in the Nations League but also appreciating what he's done he's an exceptional coach he's not probably senior manager material he probably doesn't really like the scrutiny anyway but he's a really important coach and you know what it's like we really need to deepen the talent pool of coaches and potential England managers in this country because it's it's quite shallow at the moment. Henry, mm. what were the games themselves, particularly the, 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 the first game? I mean, I've got to say, 
I thought they were very, very impressive in, in, in the kind of corresponding fixture against England when they beat England. It was, it was by no stretch of the imagination an easy game for England. No, and it'll probably be even more difficult in, in, in Athens with a passionate crowd behind them. I thought they were terrific at, at Wembley. As you say, they were well organised. They were playing for the shirt. Obviously, there was the, the additional emotion because of what mm-hmm. had happened to George Baldock. So, you know, they're, they're, they're flying at the moment. And the, the crazy thing about this, coming back to Tuchel, if the whole idea from the Football Association was for him to start on January the 1st and then head in towards World Cup qualifiers, the chances are now, because England are in such a difficult position in the Nations League, his first two games are going to be Nations League playoffs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. That's exactly what I said, Henry. I think he, they've put themselves in a real difficult situation where it's sink or swim straight away with so much pressure. On Tuchel? Yes, yes, sir. I mean, look, we know what a good coach he is, and I know, obviously, some elements of the media will be against him because they don't want an English coach. But the issue is, who is, the, you know, with the FA making this bizarre decision not to approach Eddie Howe, who who are the contenders out there? Who can? We've got an exceptional squad of players. I don't need to tell you that. It's mm-hmm. probably one of the best squad we've had, arguably, yeah. since going back to 1970. And you need an elite manager, and Thomas Tuchel is that. So, look, it's going to be a bit of a, a bumpy ride, but it, this generation of England players have got a trophy in them. I genuinely believe that. Henry, great stuff, mate. Thanks for your time this morning. Enjoy Top, your international Enjoy football. The- next Clean their books so. up. You sort that bookshelf out. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get some of your biscuits in there. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, mate. Have a great day. Talk Sport Breakfast with Alan Brazil. Thursday and Friday morning, 6 till 10 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.